All right, so all we've done so far is actually start a virtual environment and create our Django project. So if I go into my virtual environment folder and I do a pip freeze, um, this is all we have. We have Django 1.6.5 installed. We have e-commerce as the project and that's it. That's all we've done so far. We synced the database and made our main um, super user. And we see our database file right here, which it automatically created for us. I cleared everything out with command K. And again, if we list out, we see our database, we have e-commerce and manage.py. If I change directories in here, um, I see that the Django project include lib bin. Perfect, that's what I want. Um, so now let's actually open up Sublime Text and I'm gonna go file, uh, or excuse me, file new file. And then we're gonna go to project and we're gonna save project as. And we're gonna go into our virtual environment for e-commerce and we're gonna save it as e-commerce. And then we want to view the sidebar. So let's show the sidebar. Project, we're gonna add a folder to project. And that folder, if we go to desktop and then e-commerce, we're gonna add e-commerce as the fold, one of the folders that we're gonna to add to this project, all right? And now we can open up our settings.py and we'll talk about this for a second as well as our urls.py. Um, so now we have it kind of, we have it set up completely in Sublime Text. So if I actually close this out and go to project, open recent projects, it will actually open up that recent project that we just created, which is good. That's what we want to have. So let's actually talk about this for a second. Um, first off to note is base dir or base directory. Um, this gives us the path of where manage.py is. So in here we see e-commerce. This is the base directory for the Django project. So to grab anything in that base directory, you can actually use base dir and it will show that directory there. Um, OS has, it's a cool command, so you might wanna look up ways to use OS, but we will use it a little bit in our projects as well. Um, and then I'll just go down real quick, secret key, this is, you need to use it production. Um, when you use it in production, make it secret. So just keep that in mind when you actually bring your projects out. Uh, debug, this is debugging, so showing errors or not. That's gonna be code errors and then template errors allowed hosts so when we actually go live we want to put the hosting websites that would be in here so our domains so like um, codingforentrepreneurs.com as a string so like you know if we were doing that like that and then uh, any other website that you'd want in there uh, installed apps we're going to be working with this a lot um, so we will add installed apps and subtract them and it's uh, apps are basically used for one function. Uh, the first one you'll see is this admin, django.contrib.admin. This is pretty cool. We'll actually take a look at that in a second. Uh, but we also have something called sessions and messages. Uh, these things are also very important and we will use that. Auth would be like we did user login and log out. Um, so auth a lot, like manages all that stuff. Um, middleware classes. So what middleware does is in between requests. So if you go to any web page, that's called a request, right? So in between showing that web page and somebody clicking to go there, it's like fractions of seconds, it will actually run through all of these things. Um, so you can actually get to a point where you can have code in between your requests. Um, it's gonna be a little bit advanced, so we're not actually gonna cover it in this tutorial series, but um, it is something that's good to know about. Uh, root URL conf, so root URL configuration. So if we look at urls.py, this is really um, the backbone of how your site is organized. So URLs is how it's, how uh, any in individual URL for your project will handle the request. So like in this case, see how it says slash admin it says include site URLs. So what this is doing is telling the browser um, or it's grabbing from the browser what the user's URL is or what website they're visiting. And then it's telling the re uh, reflected views for that URL. 
So let's actually see what I mean in real time. I'm gonna open up terminal, change into the e-commerce project for Django, and then we'll do python manage.py run server. All right, so now that we have this server running, we can actually go here and we press enter. So what we see here is it says it worked and then it will say, you don't have any work yet. Now you have to start an app. And then also it says you haven't configured any URLs, right? So right away, our first URL, so this is a URL, our first one is saying we don't have any configured. Now, if we go to slash admin, we actually will see the Django admin. Uh, it, the CSS might be all kind of messed up for you, but that's okay. But that's what this is, right? So this is actually handling um, that URL. So if we changed it to like DJ admin and like Django admin, uh, not not like disc jockey, um, and we did DJ admin, that would that actually changes that URL, uh, which is kind of cool. So we will go into that more later, uh, but it's just nice to know. And then looking down on setting some more, this is the application that's actually gonna be served. Uh, we're not gonna really talk about this a whole lot, um, so you can kind of ignore that one for now. Uh, databases, this is literally our database. So whatever database we end up using, every once in a while your database might have some issues or something like that, and you might wanna just delete that database completely. So you look for the file, in this case it's db.sqlite3, and since we're just learning, you could just go in here and delete it. And all that does is it just takes away everything that we had installed. So doing python manage.py sync db will allow us to reinstall everything as we see here. So if you ever run into any errors with like a table not existing or something like that and you just don't know what it is, this might be a good thing to just jump and try out because since we're testing, we're not using real live data at this point because we're learning we can delete the database a thousand times. Now, of course, there will be a time where you can't just delete the database because you need that information, but we're not even close to that yet. Um, so let's just say, yes, we want to create another one and J Mitchell three, you're going to have to go through all this again. Um, that's okay because it will get you used to doing it. But I still do this to this day. If I'm having trouble with the database of some kind and I just don't know how to solve it, the fastest and easiest way to solve it is to, to delete the entire database. Um, and once we get to a point where we're using a Python package called South, there will be folders um, in each app called migrations. So if you were gonna delete your database, um, you would wanna delete the folders called migrations as well. Uh, that's just an early warning for you uh, when we get to the point of South because something might be wrong with that. Anyway, so let's continue on. We've got our language code, our time zone. Um, so this is a universal time zone and you can go ahead and Google different time zones uh, or look up the Wikipedia for it. Same with language codes, those are pretty standard. Um, and this stuff, uh, we don't have to worry about that for now. So, and then static files. So like where we're gonna actually, uh, what URL is going to be for our static files. Now this doesn't set where we're going to store our static files, but it shows um, uh, how we're going to actually access them. And we'll get to that too. Um, so that's pretty much it. If we look at our other files here, we have init.py uh, or underscore underscore init underscore underscore dot py. I will refer to it as init.py. Um, all this is doing is making this folder, e-commerce, initialized as a Python folder. So the whole project will recognize e-commerce as a Python folder, that's it. So if you deleted this, we would run into some issues. And if you notice, if you open it up, it's empty. There's nothing in there because we don't have to worry about it. So let's close it. WSGI, uh, this again is about deployment um, and it's, it's saying, look, it's calling the application. In this case, it's basically setting the Django uh, application as the one that we're using. So e-commerce, so this folder right here, dot settings. Uh, so that's the configuration folder, the one I'm pressing up and down on. Um, and then it just it basically just sets the application to work with that and it will run correctly that way. So again, our database, uh, if you open it up, you see all this stuff, it's not really that easy to read um, in in sublime text there are other ways to read it but it gets really technical so we're just going to stick away from that at this point 
because you don't. Uh, it's not very often that you'll have to actually jump in and read it. But if you do want to make changes and you don't want to just delete the database, you can look up how to open SQLite 3 and all that. There, I'm sure there's something out there that would help you with that. Or you can ask me a question. That's cool too. Um, and then manage.py. This is uh, again using our our Python stuff. So it's just a command that we use for everything. Uh, as you notice, it's also using ecommerce.settings. Um, so if you, for whatever reason, changed your configuration folder, you'd want to change everywhere it's, it says ecommerce.settings to whatever that configuration folder is. All right, so now we can actually start building some more. We are doing a lot of kind of learning and understanding of how this project's working, uh, but it's, it's really important to, to have a better idea of this stuff so then down the line, uh, things are just a little bit more clear. So um, yeah, let me know if you have any questions at this point. Otherwise, let's continue on.